the use of ailerons and rudder in stall recovery, and stall characteristics. Different types of airplanes have different stall characteristics. Most airplanes are designed so that the wings will stall progressively outward from the wing roots, where the wings attach to the fuselage, to the wingtips. This is the result of designing the wings in a manner that the wings have less angle of incident than the wing roots. Such a design feature causes the wingtips to have a similar angle of attack than the wing roots during the flight. Exceeding the critical angle of attack causes a stall. The wing roots of an airplane will exceed the critical angle before the wingtips and the ring ro wing roots will stall first. The wings are designed in this manner so that aileron control will be available at high angles of attack, quote, which is slow airspeed, and give the airplane more stable stalling characteristics. When the airplane is in a stalled condition, the wingtips continue to provide some degree of lift and the ailerons still have some control effect. During recovery from a stall, the return of lift begins at the tip and progresses toward the roots. Thus, the ailerons can be used to level the wings. Using the aileron requires finesse to avoid an aggravated stall condition. For example, if the right wing dropped during the stall and excessive aileron controlled were applied to the left to raise the wing, the aileron deflected downward the right wing would produce a greater angle of attack and drag and possibly a more complete stall at the tip as the critical angle of attack is exceeded. The increase in drag created by the high angle of attack on that wing might cause the airplane to yaw in that direction. This adverse yaw could result in a spin unless directional control was maintained by rudder and or the aileron control sufficiently reduced. Even though excessive aileron pressure may have been applied, a spin will not occur if directional yaw control is maintained by timely application of coordinated rudder pressure. Therefore, it is important that the rudder be used properly during both the entry and the recovery from a stall. The primary use of the rudder in stall recoveries is to counteract any tendency of the airplane to yaw or slip. The correct recovery technique would be to decrease the pitch attitude by applying forward elevator pressure to break the stall and advance the throttle to increase airspeed and simultaneously maintain directional control with coordinated use of the aileron and rudder. Stall characteristics. Because of engineering design variations, the stall characteristics for all airplanes cannot be specifically described. However, the similarities found in small general aviation training type airplanes are noteworthy enough to be considered. It will be noted that the power on and power off stall warning indicators will be different. The power off stall will have less noticeable clues, buffeting and shaking, than the power on stall. The power off stall, the predominant clue, can be the elevator control position, full up elevator against the stops, and a high descent rate. When performing the power on stall, the buffeting will likely be the predominant clue that provides a positive indication of the stall. For the purpose of the airplane certificate, the stall warning may be furnished either through the inherent aerodynamic qualities of the airplane or by a stall warning device that will give a clear, distinguishable indication of the stall. Most airplanes are equipped with a stall warning device. The factors that affect the stall characteristics of the airplane are balance, bank, pitch attitude, coordination, drag, and power. The pilot student, the pilot should learn the effect of the stall characteristics of the airplane being flown and the proper correction. It should be re-emphasized that a stall can occur at any airspeed, in any altitude, or at any power setting depending on the total number of factors affecting the peculiar airplane. The particular airplane. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. A number of factors <laughs> may be 
induced as the result of other factors. For example, when the airplane is in a nose high turning attitude, the angle of bank has a tendency to increase. This occurs because with the airplane decreasing, the airplane begins flying in a smaller and smaller arc. Since the outer wing is moving in a larger radius and traveling faster than the inner wing, it has more lift and causes an overbanking tendency. At the same time, both of the decreasing airspeed and lift on both wings, the pitch attitude tends to lower. In addition, since the airspeed is decreasing while the power setting remains constant, the effect of torque becomes more prominent, causing the airplane to yaw. During the practice of power on turning stalls to compensate for these factors and to maintain a constant flight attitude until the stall occurs, aileron pressure must be continually adjusted to keep the bank attitude constant. At the same time, Back elevator pressure must be continually increased to maintain the pitch attitude, as well as right rudder pressure increased to keep the ball centered and to prevent adverse yaw from changing the turn rate. If the bank is allowed to become too steep, the vertical component of lift decreases and makes it even more difficult to maintain a constant pitch attitude. Whenever practicing turning stalls, a constant pitch and bank attitude should be maintained until the stall occurs. Whatever control pressures are necessary should be applied even though the controls appear to be crossed, aileron pressure in one direction, rudder pressure in the opposite direction. During the entry to a power on turning stall to the right in particular, the controls will be crossed to some extent. This is due to right rudder pressure being used to overcome torque and left aileron pressure being used to prevent the bank from increasing.